Six developers are challenged to make the best possible video game in three weeks. Introducing the six challengers. Hello guys. Oh, I did try. When I win. I haven't taken a look. I'm mostly worried about. <laughs> hey, it's Ollie from Mashup Games. It's been a while. I was asked recently by Blackform Prod to be part of six developers. Six developers where we go up against each other and whoever makes the best game wins $3,000. Now I'm from the UK so I did have to convert that but that's still a lot of money. If you haven't seen the Blackform Prod video I would probably recommend that first because this is going to contain a lot of spoilers. But if you've already seen the video or you want to watch my video first let me take you for the journey of how I made this little game about a little USB. The theme for this week is Strange Machines. The first thing that I thought of when I heard Strange Machines was some sort of steampunk world of these cogwork machines and all that. And I started thinking, what if I had some sort of weapon which is odd or strange? When I hosted my second game jam, I had the theme Unconventional Means. I used an example of someone using a camera, taking a photo and acting as if it's shooting someone. And that had me thinking, cameras are pretty normal to us, but that's because we know what cameras are. What if you showed someone, way back in the past, what a camera was? They'd probably be pretty freaked out. And I tried prototyping it out, but it didn't work. Once I got the actual camera taken in, I realised I had no idea actually how to make this fun or even to make a strategy game. And then I started thinking of strange machines as if you're creating the strange machines. I don't know what the others are doing, so I can't check if what my idea is original or not. So instead, I'm going to avoid the whole sandbox create your own machine thing. What if you are the strange machine, but you can change and switch out body parts? And that's where I thought of this little guy, little USB character. They can run around, but they can also jump and then slot themselves into other machines. I think that's good enough for day one. I'm pretty happy with where this is at the moment. I feel like there's definitely avenues I can go down. I can turn this into a racing game. I can turn it into a puzzle game. I can turn it into a brawler type game. I'm just building a big gray box environment at the moment, seeing what I can make basically with the tools that I have. But I'm definitely in a good position. I think I'm gonna make it to the next round. I'm, I'm gonna say that now. I'm pretty confident. I'm gonna make it to the next round. As long as it doesn't cut to a clip of me then not making it to the next round, I think we're all right. I am lost. So I feel like I'm at this really critical point at the moment where I need to decide what the game's going to be. At first I thought it would make a really fun racing type of game where each of these plugins are like the item boxes in Mario Kart where you just, you hop from one to the other as you go through this sort of obstacle course type level. But then I'm also thinking, what if you attach arms as well? Then there could be your combat. That could be like an enemy round survival type game, or maybe it's you got to go through levels while also defeating enemies, punching boxes, crates, whatever. So I think at least what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some arms. I feel like that's just going to be pivotal to this whole thing. The legs are fun, but they're not everything. Headgear or hats? Sorry, that, that's a no. I'm just putting that on the table. No, I'm putting it off the table. Putting it off the table, I'm saying no. Unless... All right, now we have some legs in. I feel like there's really some good potential with this now. You can sort of attack things. You can get different types of movement with the attacks. Loads of different opportunities. Problem is now, I've got to actually do something with them. <laughs> I've spent a lot of this time setting up groundwork for different movement mechanics, different combat mechanics, but there's no levels and the deadline is tomorrow morning and it's already in the afternoon. <laughs> so I could either develop further, try and show some more potential, sort of what the game could be, or I could go with what I've got at the moment, make a couple of levels, a small handful of levels to show the capabilities and have that speak for itself. I don't know what the others are doing, they've probably got full-on levels or games, like an actual playable thing. And I don't want to run that risk, because it's a lot of money on the line. I'll make a small handful of levels, and then that will give some sort of feeling of what the game could be. I'll still include this sort of playground area where you have all the different arms and legs and props for the judges to just mess around, do whatever they want to, and just get really f a good feel for it. I need to get down and I need to make it. It's currently 
nearly 10 p.m. The deadline for the game and the video is at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. I don't have any levels yet. Oh, I'm screwed! It's okay, I've spent a lot of time putting together some logic that I'm going to need in levels anyways, and the video would speak enough for itself. Maybe I'll include a different area where, like, they can just test out all these different combinations of the arms and legs and all that. I'm gonna get close a bit. Yeah, it may be a long, long, long night. I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah. I've got eight levels, got the video, got the game done, I submitted it at 6am in the morning, having not slept at all, and then went and got about three hours of sleep. Um, I'm pretty happy with what I submitted, I had about eight levels there, which is pretty good amount, pretty good amount for the first week. I don't know if maybe I've gone overboard with what I've done, I don't know if maybe I haven't done enough, maybe everyone else has done so much and I just haven't. I'm feeling pretty confident in that what I've made is good. Whether it's good enough to go through to the next stage, we have yet to see, but I'm proud of myself. What if I just say like, oh, all these games is terrible, are you guys gonna like eliminate them for that? <laughs> The person that's going to pass and that's going to be able to expand his game for another week is Ollie. Yes! <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, everyone. Bye. Except Ollie. I'm gonna be <laughs> oh my God. Made it to the next round. Oh! Amazing. Quite interested. I thought people would be making sort of sandbox vehicle making games. And I tried to stay away from that, but it turns out everyone did. I'm a bit worried about this special twist though. My guess is that I've got to incorporate either an object or another theme into it. And that scares me. But I guess I have to see when I get it. Whether the special twist will make or break me. I've done some changes. Some changes that's just generally polishing up, like I've added a shadow to the player so you can actually see where they land. I've made some camera changes so that it's always kind of centered in the middle of the room. I've made a sort of script that I can generate wires, basically going from the buttons to the door by placing certain points. I've made a new arms component, which is a cannonball launcher, which is something I wanted to add in the first week but ran out of time. And that's going to be really good for puzzles, I think. That's going to be very useful. Another one I've just tried making is a magnet arms so you can use it to pull yourself towards like metal walls or you can use it to pick up metal objects and then you can carry them around. It's a little bit temperamental so I don't know how likely I am going to use that but it's also been the main focus of today and so I'm not sure if I want to use it just to <laughs> basically just so I don't have all that time wasted. Something I definitely need to do is sound effects because it's sounding very empty at the moment and sound effects I think really spruce it up. I'm a bit worried because I did a lot in week one. Uh, I pretty much, I pulled an all night on Saturday just so that I will have some levels to show off. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to do that much but also I feel like if I don't it will bite me in the bum and I'm not sure if I can keep up the same amount of content that I did before. I feel like I need to, or at least have more thought put into the puzzle rooms. And I don't know if I'm really that great at puzzles, which is... <laughs> I'm making a puzzle game, it's really not very clever of me. Some of these are alright. Others not so much. Here goes. Pick your poison. Oh no. <sighs> How am I going to do that? Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Well, screw me, I guess. I've got the theme and I'm not happy with it. Oh, pick your poison does not work for a puzzle game. Works if it's like an arcade game or a combat shooty game because then there's like certain things you can change like your fire rate, your move speed, your health, your damage, whatever. All those are easy changeable. But it does not work in the puzzle format. In puzzle games you either do the puzzle or you don't. If I add 
sort of stat changes there, it's just going to feel like an inconvenience. It's, it's thrown me, honestly. I have something I can do with it. Whether or not I want to add it to the game or not is a different question because I don't really, I don't think it's going to benefit the game very much. But it is a challenge and I feel like I'd be able to do enough with it. I feel like it won't necessarily feel out of place. It'll be a nice little twist on the, on the puzzle theme. It also means I have to like develop the levels a bit further than probably I wanted to. It's gonna be work. I feel like I can't get there in time. My chances are not feeling very high after that your po choose your poison theme. Fingers crossed. Today is Saturday and so I have to then submit it again tomorrow morning and it's currently 2 p.m. I need to make levels again, I'm at that point. I have some levels that's already there from last week, so it's not like I'm having to probably do another all night to get them. I made a little elevator loading sequence between each room, which can help with the level loading, but it's also a nice little segue into how I'm going to implement this secret twist theme of Pick Your Poison. So let's say the elevator's going up, but the next floor is one that has problems with it. A little robot comes in, says, oh, we're having difficulties with this next room. We have two rooms that you can choose from, and then you get to basically choose which variation of the room you can have. So one's full of goo, one's got a timer on it. Basically the same room, but just a little bit of variation there. And that is basically how I'm gonna implement the theme. I can't really think of a better way that won't like ruin the game. Some of the variations might be quite fun, like there's a little disco ball where you have to dance every 10 seconds. Say like the room fills with lava. But I'm mostly done with the elevator sequence, so then I can actually probably start making levels. And there are probably some levels I don't don't want to use again. There will be some where I can add quite good variations to it. I'm not going to be able to make bigger, more complex levels at this stage. That might be a final week thing. I think we've changed quite a bit in terms of the visual presentation of the game that it should speak for itself and I think the game is strong enough as it is to be a good contender. It's strong competition anyway so I guess we'll just have to see tomorrow if I make it or not. Oh my god, it's all time. <laughs> Alright, I think you're on the micro wrong microphone. Oh, Ollie. oh my god. Brilliant. <laughs> my smart casual. It's super well polished, it's very fun to play, and it is... Fluffy potato. Thank you. <laughs> Fluffy potato with the first bite of the rest. There's only one more place, and there's three great developers. This is a moment to like, perhaps, pause a little bit. And just like say like rug why do you think you should move on to the finals uh i've got big massive really interesting so what about you wishbone why should you move on to the final against fluffy potato it's not amazing you know and i also want to beat mash up so that'll be cool hmm. we do like that good puzzler so what are, are you really gonna like like deliver a huge crazy change if you move on to the finals are you gonna like up the polish. Oh, like, I feel like I've, I've barely scratched big levels, big, big machines, maybe even a boss battle, like quality of life stuff, making it a really big, powerful game. Will the boss be a centipede? That, will it be a centipede? <laughs> you know what? Mm. I get through, it will be a centipede. Oh, I will make the oh, boss man. a centipede. Okay, okay, I'm gonna raise that. I'm, out, I'm also adding a centipede to my game if oh. I win, okay? Rug, yeah. Rug, are, right. you adding, are you adding centipedes? I can make it two centipedes. <laughs> Call with the judges to, to reassess here because some some of the things you've said here has changed. Mm. Um, it, deep forest it it sound is like gonna I'm not have... winning. <laughs> deep forest, what? <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're gonna stop the suspense here. Liam, I'm gonna let you announce in uh, five seconds. The winner is. Wishbones. Oh. Oh my god, thank you. If I win, I'm gonna pay for your game's placement on Steam, and I'm gonna give oh, you $100. Man. Don't do that, that's too kind of you. I will, I will. Now I actually have to release it. <laughs> too much pressure. Oh, okay, okay. No, you're getting $200 then, and you can do whatever. You can just buy, like, I don't know, like, uh, like toilet paper or something, so... I think a lot of fans would have loved to see an Ollie versus Wishbone final, uh, and maybe there will be in a future edition... Next time. ...if you decide to take part again. I did not make it to the final. And you know what? I was pretty relieved. I've got a full-time job, and so doing this along the side in a competition like this, which is quite stressful, 
was really exhausting. Now the big question is that you're probably all asking, will I be continuing the USB game? I don't know. I have a main project I've been working on for quite a while, which is why I didn't upload anything in 2023. And I kind of want that to be my main focus. If I go more into this USB game, I would want to make it a bigger game, I'd want to add so many more things, and that sounds like a lot of time, so I think for the very least, I'm going to polish up the demo I have at the moment, I'm going to try and fix some of that jankiness, and then I'll upload a demo to itch.io. But talking of my main project, I've got a Steam page up right now, so why don't you go check it out? It's a cozy exploration game where you travel around an island on your own Steam train and do fun quests. So if that sounds like fun to you, why not give it a wish list? And since you're here, why not subscribe to the channel? I've come out of my hiatus now, so I'll definitely be uploading more often now. And there will definitely be at least one more video on this little guy in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.